Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and this is my card for today's 25 Days of Christmas with Paper Sweeties. And I decided I wanted to go a little bit more classic, a little bit more elegant with my card. Um, usually with Paper Sweeties stamps, they're just so sweet and cute and fun, but you can also go very classic, very traditional, and um, it just depends on how you use and combine their products. And so I thought today I'm going to do a lot of gold um, heat embossing and gold foiling. So here I've already gold foiled uh, the year 2021. This is going to be one of the Christmas cards that I send out this year. And I'm going to start off by um, gold heat embossing this wreath with this additional sort of holly, uh, berry, and leaves. These two stamps are actually from different stamp sets, but scale-wise, they work really well together. So I just think it's really clever how um, these stamps were designed so that you can combine them in this way and um, and they work really well. So I'll leave links to everything in the description box below because I can't remember off the top of my head um, what sets these came from. I think they were from Sweet Minis sets. Um, I think the Holly and Berry, well, I don't want to say because I'll probably be wrong. So uh, do check the description box below uh, for links to those products. But I'm going to start off by doing um, some heat embossing. So I'll first apply a little bit of anti-static powder and that will just help um, to the to avoid having the embossing powder kind of cling to the paper where I have not stamped. And then I'm going to use my Versamark clear ink. This is a watermark ink and it's sort of um, sticky and takes a while to dry. And so that's what's going to cling to the embossing powder. And I do like to use my Make Art Station for um, stamping these um, images so that I can get multiple uh, stamped impressions in the exact same location. And it just helps me make sure that that image is fully stamped. And I'm gonna generously uh, pour on some gold pearl embossing powder. The pearl version of um, powders from WOW, they have, um, I think, some sort of interference um, materials in them that make them stand out on um, black or colored cardstock. So they look completely different when you're um, heat embossing them onto a black or colored cardstock versus onto white cardstock. So the gold pearl is going to look really great off of this black cardstock. I do like to let my heat gun warm up quite a bit before I um, hit my embossing powder with it. That way your embossing powder is going to melt quickly and you're going to get less warping on your card, less chance of burning either the paper or the embossing powder. And so um, just really make sure that you give your heat gun a good, you know, 20 seconds or so to heat up. I am gonna, you saw me wave a piece of cardstock over my embossed image. That's because I really wanted to make sure it was cooled down before I applied this mask to it because once um, your embossing is melted, since it is just a um, kind of plastic, if you touch it right away, there's um, a chance that you'll distort that image. So you wanna make sure that it's nice and cooled down before you touch it, before you do anything else to it. So by masking off the holly and uh, holly leaves and berries, I can then stamp my wreath right over this and it'll look like the holly leaves and berries are actually part of this wreath design. And it's interesting because I think the wreath was from a spring, um, sort of a Easter themed uh, sweet minis stamp set and it actually has I think eggs <laughs> that are um, interspersed within the wreath design but you can really you can hardly really tell because it, it just kind of looks like more holly berries so I thought that 
even though um, you know these stamp sets were designed for different occasions, they still work really well together. And of course, scale wise, I think they work well together too. And so um, I thought it was just a nice, a nice uh, discovery when I found that these two would um, kind of stamp over each other and create a totally different new image. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, pour over my um, embossing powder, and I'm just taking a little fine detail um, paintbrush, uh, and I'm just wiping away this excess powder that has uh, clung to my paper. Now, despite the fact that I did use my anti-static powder, I did still get some stray embossing powder that stuck. And I think over the holly and berries, I think it was because there might have been a little bit of um, residual adhesive from my mask. But um, it's no problem if you see that you have embossing powder anywhere on your cardstock that you don't want. Just um, kind of flick it off from the back or use a um, paintbrush to just knock that off or wipe it off. Again, I'm going to get let my heat gun get nice and hot. You can see how red it is at the tip there where the heating element is. And I'm going to just try to direct the heat where the wreath is and not where the holly leaves and berries are because I don't want to run the risk of remelting what the previously stamped image and I don't want to accidentally burn it or anything from getting too much heat applied to it. And that's why it's important to really let your heat gun uh, warm up because then ultimately there'll be less heat applied to your entire project so you'll like I mentioned earlier have less warping less potential of burning and you can see how um, this uh, wreath is just a perfectly you know um, uh, kind of merge of the two stamped images so really love how that turned out and I'm gonna just go ahead and die cut that and um, we'll have a nice little topper for the front of our card. Oh yeah, there's the name of it. So I think it was Sweet Minnie's Home. And then this one is, that went too fast. I couldn't read it. Sorry. <laughs> but like I said, I'll leave links to everything in the description box below. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this scallop circle die to cut out my uh heat embossed image and I do want to mention that it's perfectly okay to do hot foiling um, and heat embossing on the same you know element or area just make sure that you're doing your hot foiling first and then heat emboss second because if you do it the opposite way around your um, when you go to hot foil that's going to remelt your heat embossed image and then when you run that through your die cutting machine to complete your hot foiling you're going to run the risk of smearing smudging or distorting your heat embossed image so if you want to combine um, the two methods of adding sort of that gold touch then um, definitely do your hot foiling first and then do your heat embossing second so i have again hot foiled my sentiment on this um, rectangular frame here and it just has Merry Christmas all the way around and I found this piece of scrap pattern paper for, that I think was left over from my Christmas projects last year and I thought it was beautiful because it's got a touch of um, gold foiling right on the paper as well and it's this really classic scene of Santa with uh, two of his reindeers and so I just thought it was really um, nice sweet image and like I mentioned really classic and so I thought um, in combination with the wreath that we just created it's going to look really um, elegant and I love that you can get all these different looks from um, the Paper Sweeties products. They, I tend to always go kind of cutesy with it <laughs> but it's nice to also um, go a little bit more elegant, a little bit more um, towards the sort of um, gold and um, traditional. So I'm going to give my acetate panel a nice wipe off here. I'm making a USA 2 size card. So my card front panel here is four and a quarter by five and a half. 
and my acetate I cut to one inch taller and wider. So that was cut to five and a quarter by six and a half and I scored a half inch glue tab on all four edges. These sequins from Paper Sweeties are going to be the star to my card because they are actually in the shape of flowers and they are actually more dimensional. They're cupped uh, way more than your regular sequins, which are more flat. And so not only do they have that uh, flower shape to them with that sort of scalloped edge, they're more dimensional too. So they move around really, really well in this um, shaker panel. And I am individually placing those um, uh, sequins into my shaker pouch because I want them all to be oriented in the same upright position because once they're in and this pouch is sealed up, they're not going to flip over to the back side. And I kept wanting to add more and more and more because these sequins are so beautiful and they move so well in this style of card. So I, I wanted to actually add even more, but I didn't want to block too much of the background. Um, and so I, I did have to call it quits, but <laughs> there's still enough left over in um, the little uh, sequin pouch that I got from Paper Sweeties to probably make, I would say definitely one, probably two more cards in this style with about that much fill. So it's a generous supply of sequins and um, even using it in this method where I was uh, fairly generous with, with how much I used. So the last thing I'll do here is just uh, make sure that my acetate front is nice and clean. I do like to wipe that um, so that I get all my fingerprints off of there. And then I will go ahead and adhere my little topper to this, it's almost like a little seal or a little badge. And um, I just use some half inch glue dots because this is going right onto acetate. So I find that my glue dots or a nice dry adhesive works better than a liquid adhesive. And look how beautiful um, that, that um, the sequins are and how well they kind of move around and how they just add to this scene. I um, did choose a scalloped circle die to kind of match that scallop shape of these uh, floral sequins. And in fact, when I showed this card to my husband, he was really, um, the first thing he said was that he liked the little flowers <laughs> in the card. So I love that, um, I don't know who else produces sequins like these, but I love them. And so if you wanna um, get some, pop on over to the Paper Sweeties shop because they have them in all sorts of different colors. Well, I hope that you enjoyed my card today. And if you did, please consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you wanna catch new videos as I publish them, click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Also, um, there's still more days left in the 25 days of Christmas with Paper Sweeties. So check out the Paper Sweeties blog to see what other Christmas inspiration the rest of the design team has created. Thanks again. Bye.